Welcome to the third video of the day. Put it this way, I didn't expect to be making any videos today. I pre-recorded our, well, our preview for the 2019 Belgian Grand Prix. I did that yesterday because I was at work today. Little did I know, the Formula One world would absolutely explode. Not that we've just had three weeks off to discuss news. No, we'll, we'll wait to Thursday. We'll wait to Thursday before the Belgian Grand Prix, but... That being said, I've got a little bit of time this evening, so I don't mind putting these videos out for you guys. If you didn't catch our video a little bit earlier on, in the last hour it was, so I wouldn't be surprised if you missed it. We did a talk about Valtteri Bottas. He is keeping his seat at Mercedes for 2020. Almost an hour later, we got the news that the man who looked very likely to take that seat, Esteban Ocon, he had previously raced for Manor. For half a season, back in 2016, blimey, that seems a long time ago, but just three seasons ago, Manor were in Formula One. Then in 2017, got the promotion at the time to Force India, then was retained at Force India for 2018. But after Force India's collapse, halfway through last season, it was announced that Lance Stroll would be moving to the team, replacing Ocon. And Ocon, consequently, for this current Formula 1 season, has had to sit on the sidelines as being Mercedes' test and reserve driver for the entire 2019 so far. Didn't get the seat at Mercedes. And we discussed that in length in our Bottas video, but spoilers, I'll cut it down for you now. Uh, basically, I, I was going more with the, the trail of thought that they just wanted to keep things... Neutral, keep things steady for 2020, give their young drivers time to develop in other teams, in less pressurised teams, because we all know Mercedes, you expect them to win races, expect them to win championships. We saw what happened with Gasly being promoted too early, and I think Mercedes will be cautious while they've got drivers like Russell and Ocon, who have potential to be brilliant drivers, don't want to rush them in too quickly. So I think that's the thinking there. But we discussed that again in plenty more detail over in that video. So you can feel free to check that one out. But do it after this one. Do it after this one. Because I actually think this move is much more interesting than the Bottas confirmation of staying in his seat. Which isn't really a move. But this one, Ocon, almost the, I don't know, the knock-on effect of that is Ocon hasn't got a seat. But Mercedes have decided to let him spread his wings and have given him a chance to race for Renault. Now, there's differing reports. Some say Mercedes have completely let him go. He is now a Renault driver completely. Others say they're just loaning him to Renault. So it's still unclear at the moment, as of recording, whether he's a Renault driver now fully or if he's still linked to Mercedes. So I, I can't answer that today, but hopefully over the weekend we'll get more answers and, well, less questions, <laughs> to be honest with you. But this is a huge move for Renault. Last year, we saw them bring in Daniel Ricciardo. Did that upset the balance? Well, not really. They let Carlos Sainz go, who was on loan from Red Bull. So all they were really doing was Hulkenberg, who'd been at the team since 2017, just solidifying the team, bringing in Ricardo, And for me, Ricardo and Hulkenberg is one of the best driver pairings on the grid. Love both of them, think both of them are brilliant. What I just said there is contradictory, obviously, to what Renault think. Because now, they're dropping one of these two drivers and bringing in Ocon. A man who hasn't been in Formula 1 for a season. But they think they need the young blood. And I can understand that. A little bit. I think it's a big risk. Now the team have gone and decided, I mean pretty obviously, that Nico Hulkenberg will be making way from the team. And again, there's differing reports on this and we haven't really seen many opportunities for interviewers and media teams to have face-to-face -face interviews with Hulkenberg yet and with the team. But this is a big surprise for me that Renault have let him go. Three seasons now. Hulkenberg has been with Renault. Think about when he first joined the team. That was a real difficult time. 2017, the car wasn't brilliant. He managed to get a couple of really strong results, but last year was really able to spearhead that team. Carlos Sainz, I mean, we all know the fantastic job he's been able to do at McLaren this year, but Hulkenberg really had the edge 
really had the edge, had the edge over the entire midfield, finishing best of the rest. They've bought in Daniel Ricciardo, they've offered to pay him vast amounts more money, which I imagine for Hulkenberg, someone who's carried that team on his shoulders for the past two years, to then hear that news, that's a bit of a, a shock to the system. But I think they've been pretty level paying so far this year. I think only five points separate them so far. Hulkenberg, I believe, has had one more retirement than Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo's 8-4 in the qualifying battle. So Ricciardo's had the edge on Saturday, but I don't think they've been miles away from each other. Maybe that's just me, but I think they've been pretty similar all season long. In a car, which reliability hasn't been brilliant, which we know with Renault, that's not really a shock these days. But also just the overall pace of the car hasn't been there from weekend to weekend. And every single race we've gone to, some weekends, they've been great. Other weekends, they've not been so great. And that's hurt both Daniel Ricciardo and Hulkenberg. So, considering Hulkenberg, back in 2017, I don't want to say risked his career, but made a bold move to go to Renault. Although it was a works team, and that always has its benefits, Renault weren't in a strong position. And he, he was brave. He took the jump. He took the leap of faith. I'm going to sort of, I don't know, mirror this to what Grosjean did. He jumped away from the chance to go with Renault in 2015. What, well, to 2016 that was. He took the gamble with Haas. Notice Haas have repaid him the favour this year, given him an extra year when he probably shouldn't have been given the chance. But because of that loyalty he showed the team in the beginning, they've repaid him now, which I think is really nice. Hulkenberg took the chance. And now, almost the first sniff of a potential superstar, I'm not too convinced yet by Esteban Ocon, I want to throw that out there, but the first sniff that they can bring him into the team, they've done it. And Hulkenberg has said he's, you know, he's disappointed, but he's looking for other opportunities, you know, all, all that mumbo jumbo that drivers spew out when a deal like this is confirmed, but I'm really surprised at Renault, to be totally honest with you. And again, we don't know the ins and outs behind closed doors, but I'm surprised Renault have let him go because he's been consistent. He hasn't been one of these drivers that one weekend will show up, then the next couple of weekends be nowhere. He's been a little bit nowhere overall this year, I feel, but then I feel both Renault drivers have, as of the reasons I mentioned a minute ago. I think the bigger surprise is that they've gone with Ocon, someone who... OK, he's had two and a half years experience of Formula One. But in both those seasons, finished behind Sergio Perez and Pascal Verlein. The man I won, I think, is a little bit unfair to take any real conclusions from, but he did. So he's never beaten a teammate in Formula One over a season. I find it very unlikely that he'll do that against Daniel Ricciardo, beat him in a season. Obviously, Mercedes didn't want him. So you, you question whether... Usually in this kind of situation, if Mercedes say, oh, we don't want him, you'd think to yourself, oh, well, Renault don't want second best, but they have done in this particular situation, which makes me think he's going to be a full, fully fleshed out Renault driver now. We don't know. I think the bigger thing, he's had a year out of Formula One. That is huge. That is huge. And he's coming into a team that he doesn't know. He's going up against a driver like Daniel Ricciardo. The pressure's going to be on. And knowing that he's taken Hulkenberg's seat, eyes are going to be glued on Ocon to see whether he can perform. Not just from the media, not just from the fans, but people within that team that have made relationships with Hulkenberg, now they're going to let him go. They're going to judge Ocon. They need him to get results. I wonder whether Renault are making this move for the long term, in the sense that they want to keep Ocon for five or six years, He's French. Renault are obviously French. Make him the talisman of the team. I wonder if they're doing that. But I, I'm worried on the flip side of that. And is this a short-term thing? Is this Renault saying, oh my God, we've really struggled in the first half of 2019. We've got to do something drastic to fix the situation. We don't know what's going on. We need a superstar to come in the car, perform and then save us. Is that what they're hoping for? I doubt it. Again, Ocon's been out of Formula 1. He's not proved himself to be a superstar as of yet. He's had some brilliant performances, don't get me wrong. But I don't think we've seen enough 
brilliant performances for me to warrant him a superstar just yet. That's where I'm scared. Which side of the coin is it? Because if it's long term, I get it. Hulkenberg and Ricardo are both in their 30s now, or Ricardo's about to be in his 30s. No, I think he, he just was 30 the other week, wasn't he? So I can see why they're a little bit cautious and say, look, let's have a younger driver that can learn from Ricardo and plan out the future. Again, if he's a Mercedes driver, though, that throws that into doubt. And then if he's not up to par, then what happens? Is this just a chance of, I don't know, filling out a seat until an actual Renault Young driver, an Antoine Hubert, Grand Nian Joe from Formula 2? When they get good enough, I, I don't really know. For Ocon, really happy for him. Gives him another chance, a real chance, to prove himself in Formula 1. I think he's good enough for Formula 1. Questions whether he would have been the calibre of driver for Mercedes. So I think it makes sense for him to go to Renault. Really scared for Hülkenberg. Of course, we're going to be doing a video on this in a couple of days' time after the Belgian Grand Prix dies down. Because, to be honest with you, doing another video tonight scares me a little bit after a full day of work. And we've done two. But I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Hülkenberg, for me, has to be on the grid. Has to be on the grid. Just throwing that out there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one.